it's Flo, and this is my impression of a coach giving the ultimate pep talk. Listen, the proper technique is going to Progressive.com so you can see Progressive's direct rate with our competitors' rates, even if we're not the lowest, like we practiced. And remember, no matter what happens, the important thing is to try and save some money out there. Uh, thanks, coach. Man, I love this job. Compare rates and save at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Blog Talk Radio. When you're born in this world, you're given a ticket to the freak show. It's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. And when you're born in America, you're given a front row seat. So part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. There is no America. There is no democracy. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. There is only IBM and ITT and AT&T and DuPont, Dow, Union Carbide and Exxon. Those are the nations of the world today. It's a big club and you ain't in it. Do you know how naive you sound? Why? Senators and presidents don't have men killed. Oh. Who's being naive, Kay? They got you by the ball. <laughs> To the front row at the Freak Show, I am your host, Steve Crafts. But all you good freaks out there know by now that you can call me Crafty. Hey, joining me shortly will be none other than the Atomizer. And uh, when that happens, both of us will be coming to you live here from the faring landscapes of FEMA Region 1. I don't want to jinx this all, but I think... The winter ass pounding is in our rearview mirror, and hopefully each day we'll be getting uh, ooh, just a little bit warmer than the last. Uh, oh, man, I tell you, it's winters like these that make me make me wonder anyway, just, just what the hell I'm doing here, I guess. But uh, seriously, though, uh, some oh, cold-ass shit here uh, that we just went through, and uh, i got to get myself warmer. I really do. But, hey, um, enough of that. we got a great show in store for y'all tonight. I have ready myself with the standard nine chicken wings and a pint of vanilla go- vodka. But uh, i got to be honest. I was forced into the uh, double barrel orange masculine uh, tonight as the masculine store was out of the chocolate. So uh, we'll see where that takes us, huh? Is two enough? Who knows? Uh, I'm packing extra just in case, but let's hope it doesn't come to that. <laughs> hey, uh, the front row at the Freak Show is brought to you and sponsored by absolutely no one. <laughs> we are hoping to uh, uh, one day change that, and when we do, I will mention you right here. You know, and maybe you're a uh, maybe you're a chicken wing place or a maker of vodkas. Give us a call. We'll talk some turkey. There's actually a whole bunch of shit I like and would be proud to provide my ringing endorsement for. So you freaks know, if and when it does happen, that will be the rule. i got to use it and like it, God damn it. But, uh, hey, you know, really, really, there's a lot of stuff out there. Coffee, love coffee. No, huh? How about, how about smokes? I'm a smoker. I have to imagine it's hard for tobacco companies to uh, find places to advertise anymore these days. You know, come on over to the front row. We'll talk. I have to get me off my brand, but hey, I'm not married to him. Not married to him. I only act like I am. So anyway, again, we're going to be bringing the atomizer out here shortly, and when we do, uh, you know, we'll find out what he likes too. Uh, we'll get a few more sponsor sponsor options. 
Uh, actually, I'm just looking at uh, what I mentioned, chicken wings, vodka, coffee, cigarettes. <laughs> Man, probably going to end up needing to uh, plug something like Lipitor or some other heart drug, right? Uh, but um, anyway, hey, before we do get the atomizer on and uh, we get all the, into all the ways that you can get in touch with us here uh, tonight, I did have one thing I kind of wanted to hit up solo here, I guess, you know, a little uh, monologue, if you will. Um, actually, well, even if you don't, I guess, fuck you. But, um, I recently watched a documentary that, uh, ultimately I highly recommend. And, uh, of course, I only recommend if you can, in fact, watch it and remain objective. And I understand that just by that, you know, just by itself, that's asking a lot. And if people watch things objectively, well... I probably wouldn't be seeing ads for the new hit show, The Sex Box. Really, people? I mean, if ever there was a real true sign of the apocalypse, I would have to think that two people agreeing to settle their marital sexual issues by having sex in a big box on a stage in front of a live audience, a few pseudo-celebrity judges, and of course, whoever the hell's watching, that would have to be at least in the top five. I tell you what, tell me the episode that only one of them comes out of that box, and I'll tune in for that. But I digress. What I wanted to uh, talk about real quick here was this documentary called There's No Place Like Utopia by Joel Gilbert. Mr. Gilbert was also the man who brought you Dreams of My Real Father, uh, where, uh, it was a few years old, I should have got the date for you, sorry, but where he asserts that um, our current president, Barack Obama, is in fact the love child of... Frank Marshall Davis, a well-known fan of the hammer and sickle in all things red. Uh, that is to say, a communist for all you with the fluoride brain. But anyway, in this expose, he first establishes that for the past 50, 60 plus years, America has been subject to the lure of ever-growing and expanding entitlements, combined with a decentivizing of American entrepreneurship and manufacturing through taxation and regulation that has left entire cities like Detroit to be nothing more than that of a recently ruptured boil on the ass of the American landscape. You know, where you still have all the inflammation, burning, and pain associated with boils, but it's also covered in pus and blood and ooze and just real nasty shit. But with this, I wholeheartedly agree. And if you think Detroit is the only city that will end in such a fate, please go stand in the line currently marked, I had no idea priests were capable of such things. However, where this is certainly uh, the case, uh, where, yeah, where this is certainly the case, where I think Mr. Gilbert falls extremely short, in my opinion, is the belief that this is all simply the fault of the Democrats. Okay, according to Mr. Gilbert, the viewer has no choice but to believe that if not for the Democratic Party, especially in cities like Detroit that has had a Democrat mayor for the last 50 years, then the city and country would not be in the shape it's in. And this is simply hogwash. This country, low-lighted by cities like Detroit, are in the shape it's in for two reasons. Democrats and Republicans. It is the fact that for virtually 50, 60 years now, there has not been two parties, but one party with two ugly-ass Luciferian heads, which have combined forces and collectively allowed themselves to be run, manipulated, enticed, paid off, and otherwise bent over and fucked by the likes of big banks, the military-industrial complex, and transnational corporations in general, only ever stopping for perhaps a quick smoke and some more lube so even more corporate dick can get squeezed up in there. If you want to claim the socialist progressive movement started with the Democrats, all right, I'll listen. If you want to say that they have been the main purveyors of this movement, I will also listen. However, to put this solely on the backs of just the left just ain't right. Look, I was born and raised and lived most of my life in Beantown. The last time they had a Republican mayor, 
That would be Malcolm Nichols, of course, and you remember him, Boston Mayor, 1926 to 1930. So a lot longer than Detroit. The reason why manufacturing has left Detroit and other places is because of stuff like trade agreements that have been written to and agreed upon and passed by both sides of the aisle. He also did a whole segment on immigration, and he went and talked to immigrants, asked them why they came and, and all that stuff. The bottom line is, you know, I didn't see Bush putting up a wall or his daddy. Sure, Obama and the progressives, hey, they might deal the death blow with amnesty, but please, it is far from a problem exclusive to his watch. So this is the bigger problem, the thinking and promoting that it's the other side's fault. Stop it already. Because the thing is, until we all wake up to that fact, the fact that, like, GW feels Slick Willie is just his brother from another mother, and yeah, he actually said that? Well, we're just spinning those wheels that were once made in a great American city, like the Moda City, Detroit. My final thought on this film is directly aimed at Mr. Gilbert. Joel, my friend, the 70s, Bob Dylan look went out with Bob Dylan in the 70s. I'm assuming it's you behind the Highway 61 production, so your obsession with Bob is duly noted and mostly appreciated. But the look, sorry, my friend, just ain't working, my man. But I will ask you, when you gonna wake up? <clears throat> all right, so that's about all I got from that. And why don't we, with that, bring along the man uh, who, at this time, does he need an introduction still? <laughs> like I said, also coming to us live from FEMA Region 1 is the Atomizer. Atomizer, you out there? You got your ears on, good buddy. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. And I got uh, plenty to say tonight, both on our main topic and, man, I got a i got to take a couple issues, if I may, with uh, some of what you were just saying there. <clears throat> you know, this idea <laughs> that, um, uh, you know, private uh, uh, entrepreneurs and all this other stuff are being bullied by, uh, uh, by the public interest, that's backwards, man. Come on. The reality is it's the, the public sector that's going away, okay? We, I mean, take a look at what's happening here. Now, first of all, it does not matter who the hell fathered Obama. I think that... You know, this this birtherism is a little ridiculous. But that aside, man, you want to look at what's wrong with Detroit. It's it's a simple matter that capitalists are finding other places to go outside of America where there's cheaper markets, you know, cheaper labor. They can sell their uh, their goods to these people, so they basically get their money back on it. But they're moving out. They're moving to Bangladesh. They're moving to all of these other, you know, third world or second world countries. Uh, because labor is cheaper. Why would you continue to pay American laborers what American laborers have become used to when you can pay a fraction of that and move your business offshore? It's, it's you know, this has very, very little to do with, uh, um, in fact, nothing to do with the idea that we're keeping the private entrepreneurs down. The private entrepreneurs are doing just fine. If anything, the problem is we don't have a real left in this country anymore. You're absolutely correct that the, the Democrats and the Republicans are two sides of the same coin. <clears throat> but, again, both of those coins are on the right. We don't have anybody representing the interests of the workers anymore. And you can call me a communist all day, but until we actually have some decent representation for our workers, this kind of thing is going to continue to happen, where they're given them a choice that says, hey, either you work for next to nothing and take no benefits, or we're moving to Bangladesh. You know, we, this is what needs to stop, man. In my opinion, I think, you know, I, I didn't see the movie, but i got to tell you, from what you're telling me, it seems... Uh, it seems pretty skewed, and not just towards the Republican thing, but towards uh, the idea that, you know, prior this, this Ayn Randian idea that private entrepreneurs are the job creators, and they're not. By the way, any, any economist will tell you that jobs are created by the consumers, not by the bosses and the owners, okay? But this stuff has to stop. This is, this is what's been running us into the ground. We need more public interest, less private interest, or it's just going to continue to get worse, and we're going to have more... You know, more and more of these Koch brothers basically running the country like slave mongers. They're putting $900 million 
into the election this year, the Koch brothers. That's the same as the Democratic Party is putting in. That's the same as the Republican Party is putting in. Why? Because they want to shut down the government so that workers have no more protections anymore. Okay? And they've been doing it. They've been, we've seen the government shutdowns. They've been winning. we got to stop this shit, my opinion. But sorry, had to rant there. No, absolutely. And, and you know, for the most part, I completely all I was really trying to highlight was that um, is that he comes out right, and the, the reason why I liked the film was because number one, he really did spend a lot of time and uh, you know up close camera work, all that sort of stuff in a place like Detroit, right? And when you really see what the hell has happened there, man, I'm telling you, if a nuclear bomb went off there tomorrow, it would only improve the place. I mean, it is just absolutely uh, a mess, right? Oh, and, yeah, I've seen reports yeah, that there really are wild dogs running in the say, streets. And, and, and maybe like, I didn't speak it eloquently enough. was just that, you know, his reasoning for all this was just dependent on the Democrats, right? I mean, throughout the yeah. whole thing, it was Democrats, Democrats, Democrats. Yeah. And, 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 <laughs> and, you know, I agree with all of what you're saying, just that, you know, tried to sum it up and by saying, look, both parties, if you want to call them that, have yep. been the ones fucking us, right? I mean, yep. uh, uh, you know, that's been the problem. It's, it's been the trade agreements, right? Exactly. Work is... Well, yeah, they've, they've sold the out. Country. They've entirely exactly sold what? out. And they've sold out every worker out there because they're more interested in taking the money from the private interests and the lobby groups and everything else. And again, you know, it's it's even the... the um, exactly. The pensions, and people are getting screwed out of their countries. pensions that they were promised in Detroit. You know, this is this is oh, ridiculous, this. and we need to stop it. Yeah. It is not right that we are letting the rich run our country because they're the ones who can pay the uh, the politicians for their campaigns. This has got to stop. It's plutocracy. Absolutely. And, you know, they're able to go to these other countries, bully around the, you know, leadership or – or what have you, and, um, you know, essentially, I you know, I guess that, I mean, <laughs> ultimately, Adam Eisner, I'm sensing a whole episode here, right? Because, you know, and obviously, but, um, you know, they they can go, you know, just, I think as we brought up, you know, uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, where they can go in and bully the, the leadership and, and, and set up shop for, for pennies on the dollar, and, um, you know, the thing is, is, you know, okay, uh, well, you know what, I, I I don't want to go down the road too much because then it's just going to be a whole lot of Leave it in the teaser for a future show, man. We've got to put it on the calendar say, and do a show on this, this subject. I agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what are we as the American people going to say, you know, I mean, here's Apple, say, take for instance, right? Hottest yeah. company product ever. You know, and they got suicide deaths outside their plants in China, right? Yep. And yep. they're there for a reason. They felt <laughs> the need to put up to it. So when, you know, the, just as much blame goes on us for buying this crap. And I'm saying, no, you know, we're not going to buy it if you're going to use, right? So, oh, absolutely. Let me, let me take a moment just to plug a little app that you, you can get. It uh, doesn't have to be for Apple. It can be for any phone called Bicot, uh, which helps, to, helps you to uh, scan the barcodes of any product. Um, and figure out whether or not that's going to funds or companies or anything else that you don't want to support. You get to sign up for uh, which um, uh, campaigns, basically, you're, you're with. So if you're um, against uh, Coca-Cola killing people down in South America or whatever else, you sign up for that. It's going to let you know if this product is made by Coca-Cola or whatever else. It's a really nice little app. I use it all the time to try to make sure that I'm voting with my dollar, you know, what few dollars I do spend nowadays. Fantastic, and it truly is. certainly the uh, you know the the top app is going to learn and and um, uh, re, you know oh it looks like uh, we may have lost our host here for a minute. Um, uh, I'm seeing a little notification here, and uh, everything went quiet. I'm assuming he's going to call right back in, uh, but I guess in the meantime, it's up to me to entertain everybody. So I guess I'll sing. No, I'm just kidding. I won't torture you all with that. Um, 
anyway, the topic of tonight's show, uh, for those of you who don't already know, um, is uh, we're going to get into, uh, oh, wait, 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 here he is, he's back. Oh, no, he's dropped again. <laughs> oh, somebody must be having a problem with their phone. Um, anyway, <clears throat> it, uh, assuming you can all still hear me out there, um, it looks like, um, again, our host has, uh, has dropped for the moment. And uh, But our episode tonight, In God We Trust, we're going to be examining uh, religion, atheism, the battle between the two, and it looks like he's back. Are you back, Crafty? Atomizer, I don't know what the hell just happened there, but uh, getting, you know, getting put it off. Hey, you take on the Koch brothers and these people, you know, this is just the kind of shit that happens. Oh, man, I just felt like a co-pilot when a pilot passes out. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well, I am sure that you handled it uh, fantastically. Um, I was actually going to roll us into, I don't know, did you uh, uh, provide any of the ways to get in touch with us tonight for all the good freaks listening out there? I did not get a chance. Go right ahead and uh, tell them how to get us. All right. Well, uh, first of all, you can uh, please uh, call in and give us a call at 646-668-8756. Give us a call, or, of course, you can... um, log into, and I actually, uh, I was listening to a couple other podcasts here on Blog Talk Radio, so, I mean, there should just be a fat old live chat screen kind of right under um, us here at blogtalkradio.com forward slash front row. Um, we got the chat room window open, so uh, so please, um, you got something on your mind, please call in. Obviously, the other way is uh, you can hit up Atomizer uh, via the tweets at, at Atomizer1. We got at at the freak show, and you can send us your emails at crafty at front row at the freak show dot com. So uh, I think Adamizer, uh, the you know, I kind of went in and out there, but I did hear you kind of summing up what we got uh, on tap for the night. That's fantastic. Um, obviously, as always, first up is the front row scuttlebutt. So. Uh, you know, we've kind of been going a, a kind of certain pattern here, and I've certainly been been yapping a lot already. So, do you want to kick us off with uh, with your scuttlebutt? Sure, why not? All right. So, I got a couple stories coming to us uh, tonight, and uh, trying to stay on theme as best as I can. Um, basically, um, the first story, and it's going to take me a minute to pull this up, so I can give you guys the. Um, uh, the, the information on the website where you can go and look at these stories yourself. I always encourage you to do that. I think uh, hearing it from me and my take on it is one thing. Reading it for yourself is a totally different thing that you all should be doing. Um, but the first story, which, again, I will give you the, uh, the site for in just a minute, comes, uh, comes to us from uh, down south, down from the uh, Nashville way. And it seems that there are some uh, – there's an atheist group that is trying to um, uh, host an event on Easter weekend, as we do. And it's uh, it's run into a little bit of flack because they're putting up billboards and uh, the the um, it's not the, the local authorities, mind you, it's the billboard company itself feels that these billboards are a little inappropriate, a little uh, offensive, okay? Um, now, what they're basically saying is, um, and again, I'm paraphrasing because uh, I didn't have this up, and I do apologize, uh, but what they're trying to say is, hey, um, we're having a big atheist meeting on Easter Sunday. Uh, looks like another, it looks like another Sunday when atheists won't be in church, okay? Basic, simple sentiment, all right? Uh, and the uh, billboard company is asking them to strike the words Easter and church, on the basis that this is going to offend people in the Nashville area. Now, it should be noted that there are also all sorts of other billboards in the Nashville area from Christian and other religious groups, um, which kind of take offense to a different level. Um, there are some that are quite a bit anti-gay. There are some that are um, uh, just plain disturbing in a lot of ways. Now, if you ask me, I think it's really not the billboard company's prerogative to decide that words like Easter and church are offensive. I mean, I understand if you want to put a, you know, a naked lady up there, okay, that might offend 
you know, parents or something to that effect. I can understand if you, you know, want to put fuck you Christians or something on the bill, but yeah, okay, all right. Maybe that's taking it a step too far. Maybe not as bad as some of the anti-gay ones you're going to find around Nashville, but nonetheless, all right, I could understand that. The words, But the words church and Easter, I mean, this is this is fucking ridiculous. And, you know, I think it's... Well, I, I do find them offensive. Left. What? What was that? I said I sure find them offensive. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, and I think it's righteously being laughed at by the atheist groups that, that they're making them do this shit. I think it's it's complete crap that anybody would ever um, think that uh, this is somehow more offensive than, again, the other shit that you're you're going to find around there. Okay, uh, I do have the, uh, the story up now, finally, because I'm good that way. Um, and it comes from rawstory.com. Uh, that's R-A-W-S-T-O-R-Y.com with the headline, Atheist Group Blasts, quote, Absurd Decision to Censor Its Easter Billboards in Nashville. So anybody who wants to take a look at that, I encourage you to do so. Um, certainly go ahead and uh, send your support on to, uh, I forget, was it America? Yeah, American Atheists is the group involved. Um, and, uh, you know, let them know how you feel and let them know uh, that you support uh, their right to use words like church and Easter when, uh, you know, again, some of the uh, billboards out there are far, far more offensive um, than anything that, uh, that you're going to see coming out of them. Um, you know, uh, I'll just kind of leave that story Absolutely there. Absolutely agreed, Adam Eiser. It's it, it is what it is, and it's it's you know it's offensive to me that people are trying to censor them. That's that's what I find offensive. Um, but anyways, moving on to our other story, which I actually this one I find a lot more interesting. I think it's uh, you know that's not to disparage American atheists and what they're going through, but I think this one makes a very solid point. Okay, this one comes to us from uh, WorldReligionNews.com. All right, mm. and the title is Atheist Group in Iceland registers all newborns to their organization. Well, think about that. So an atheist group out in Iceland, which, by the way, lovely country. I went there a couple times, uh, long story. Um, if you ever get the chance, I recommend that you visit. And no, they, told, they told the big banks to go fuck themselves back in 07, 08 when we should have, but yep, separate, yep. separate story. <laughs> well, that's because they got raped by the big banks before we. <laughs> the, um, I shouldn't say before, but it was it came to a head before over there before it came to a head over here. Slightly, um, but their resolve was much different. Absolutely, yeah, they banded together and did what we should be doing, should have done. Absolutely, I agree with that. Um, but anyway, so this this group, okay, they're they're an Icelandic based atheist group, and they have decided that every newborn is going to be registered into their group as an atheist. Well, they're right. They're absolutely right. A newborn is an atheist. He hasn't yet been told of God. He hasn't been indoctrinated. And I don't think that this is a point that is arguable by any stretch of the imagination. The reason I say that is this. If you're going to be a Christian, all right, you're certainly aware of missionaries and that a part of missionaries' job is, or at least used to be, because there aren't too many places out there now that where you're going to find people who haven't heard of the Bible, but it's to go find people who haven't heard of the Bible and teach them about Christ. Okay? Well, if you've got to go teach people out in remote areas who have never heard of Christ, don't you have to teach a baby? Okay? Isn't he born without the knowledge, without any concept of God whatsoever? He's born an atheist. This is undebatable. So I think they're absolutely right what they're doing here. And I think, it may, you know, again, they're, they're making the point, which is to say we all start out atheists. It's only when we start to indoctrinate uh, our children and start to ram the Bible down their throat or up their ass or wherever the hell you feel like you're going to jam the Bible that they start to go for these, in my opinion, warped ideas of what right and wrong are and that, uh, you know, love has something to do with some carpenter who died 2,000 years ago in the desert versus your mother and your father, who, if you're lucky, love you, and, you know, your family and, and um, you know, ultimately your, your significant other, whatever else. You know, it's no wonder the people in this country are so messed up. You know, what, what are you going to expect when you're, you're telling people that, that love is all about the Ten Commandments, which, let me just say, the Ten Commandments, first four 
are love me and only me, the one God, and you go all the way down to do not cover, covet your neighbor's ass, which is donkey, but, you know, you skip right over the part about no rape, no slavery. In fact, if you read Leviticus and Deuteronomy, you're quite welcome to take slaves and to rape and to do what you want. Um, it's just obscene. It's not a moral guide. And I, I challenge anybody out there, call in. Tell me different. Tell me what. Tell me, you know, that uh, somehow those few passages. Six four six 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 eight eight seven five six. That's right. And tell me that those few passages in there, which represent goodness, you know, and and do unto others and that sort of thing, somehow cancel out all of the other ridiculous prescriptions for some of the most immoral bullshit out there. If the Bible is a guide to morality, then I'm fucking Napoleon because it ain't. Deal with it. it ain't. <laughs> so Napoleon, I got a question for you. Um, yeah. This group, can you tell from the article? Like, are they just doing it with babies born to the people in that group, or is this like an Iceland-wide thing? Uh, no. As far as they are literally uh, registering all newborn children within Iceland as members of their organization. The group, by the way, is called Vantru. V A N T R U. Okay, oh, but so they are like, registering so every newborn if, within Iceland as a member of their group. So even if Mr. and Mrs. Smithakovich down the street have a baby and they're Catholic, this group is still registering that baby as an atheist. Absolutely, and, you know, it was that, uh, Dawkins who, who made an excellent point of this in saying that, you know, it's wrong to call a child of Christian parents or a child of Muslim parents or a child of you know, Jewish parents, a Jewish child or a Christian child or a Muslim child, you, to assign that kind of um, uh, label to a child who, who has no clue what it means, especially a newborn, is simply fucking insane. These guys are absolutely right. Yeah. Until that child gets indoctrinated and starts spouting off their biblical or Quran or whatever else bullshit, they are an atheist. They are absolutely correct. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, it's funny because um, – and a great story, great story, by the way. Um, you know, I didn't exactly know where we're – you know, where, it's gonna, where things are going to go while we rant on about a lot of this stuff and hurrying around. But, um, uh, you know, certainly one of the things that I would like to see change, uh, uh, you know – Obviously, big, massive, old frickin' elephant in the room here with this topic, but, um, you know, we don't <laughs> – you have a baby, right? They don't come out and you don't force them to be Republican or force them to be Democrat or force them to be whatever, right? Well, some people we do. deal with religion. It's the one and only thing that we yeah, – no, you are this, sorry to say, right? No choice, no – uh, uh, no uh, instruction, just or 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 no education, just pure indoctrination. So, uh, absolutely, you know, let's let's uh, let them all be free thinkers for the first twelve, thirteen, eighteen years of their lives, and uh, then see what uh, 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 you know what becomes of it. And uh, to me, it would be a fantastic solution. And I don't think religion would be around too long if this were allowed to happen, and thus. Why it doesn't? Absolutely, and you know, I, I absolutely agree with what you were just saying. I, I remember uh, one time I was working for a certain state university, and I had to go to the uh, the lecture that they make you attend as to um, it's basically the political correctness lecture, um, and they talked about the protected groups within the state um, as being you know. Um, uh, <clears throat> You know, you're protected if you're a minority, if you happen to be black, whatever it may be, it happened to be black. There's a, there's a George Carlin thing for us. But, um, but you know, on the list is religion. And I raised my hand and I had to ask the, the gentleman who was speaking. I said, uh, you know, why is religion on this list? Everything else on this list is not a choice. You don't choose to be gay, okay? You don't choose to be black. You don't choose any of these things. Religion is very much a choice. If you feel that you're being, you know, persecuted for your your religion, you have the option to change it, you know, rebuke it, whatever, you know, go apostate. You have that option. And all he could say to me was, well, growing up in my household, it really wasn't a choice. And that is so 
fucked up. <laughs> so fucked up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, um, yeah, no, great stuff. And I'm sure, uh, um, you know, as we both said, that uh, after we get through the scuttlebutt here and in our first break, we're going to be uh, hitting all this and more in haranguing around. So, uh, so let's um, let's just jump right to. Um, I, 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 I don't want to actually. I don't want to cut you off. Is there any any uh, additional notes that you got for your for your scuttlebutt, Adamizer? No, I think it's pretty well covered, man. You take it away. Tell me what you got. Okay, fantastic. Well, uh, you know, par usual. And let me just uh, real quick before I get started. Six four six 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 eight eight seven five six. Please give us a call, um, and uh, or certainly uh, uh, jump on into the uh, uh, hopping chat room right now. And uh, but anyway, par usual, no shortage of good stuff out there um, in in the world of news. And uh, you know, by uh, by good, of course, I mean evil and twisted and simply piling on to the veritable mountain of stories and examples that we are, in fact, living in bizarro world. Uh, you know, I could talk about Hillary. Uh, yeah, looks like old hills in a little hot water. Um, and I'm actually wondering, has it ever been disproved that she's not the result of some top-secret Nazi genetic experiment? Uh, what year was she born? 46? <laughs> I mean, the timing is, like, perfect. But uh, I could also report on Senator Bob Menendez. Menendez who uh, you might have seen is also feeling the rising temp of the bathwater right now. And, uh, oh, this is beautiful. You Have you seen this? Uh, brought up on corruption charges. Uh, I know, I know. Sometimes the material writes itself. Um, and you all can look it up, but suffice it to say, having a senator charged with corruption, I, I don't know. It's like having the rain charged with getting you wet or having a hooker charged with charging. Oh, uh, it's just all poetry, man. I mean, Attorney General Eric Eric Holder has apparently signed off on the case. And of course, if there's anyone knows who what uh, corruption looks like, it is Attorney General Eric Holder. But uh, anyway, so that's the stuff I'm not going to cover. Uh, what I did want to bring up uh, here were two other, probably lesser seen headlines, and the first was from Glenn Beck. Uh, and and uh, I just got to give a shout out to uh, the Texas Changas who said they should all be brought up on changes in the live cha- uh, on charges in the live chat room. But uh, uh, speaking of being brought up on charges, Glenn Beck um, had an article at the end of last week, and uh, it was entitled "Netanyahu's Speech Was a Warning for Those Who Know This Story from the Bible." And uh, as we've indicated already, we're going to get more into our blasphemy later in the ringing around uh, segment. But suffice it to say, this here, in my opinion, is the biggest part of the problem with religion. To summarize, Mr. Beck feels that the speech made by uh, Ben Netty last week was, in fact, a not-so-thinly-veiled warning that we're going to go down the same road as a few characters from the Old Testament Bible. And not only that, but history is repeating itself. And the stars are all aligned so that essentially the story is going to play itself out again. He goes on to add that we as Americans need to take heed and take warning and listen closely to the story of Esther, Queen of Persia, who was around roughly 2,500 years ago. And to think, I wondered why Glenn Beck is so popular. Beck is a master button pusher. Knows exactly which buttons to push and when. He would have made a a great elevator operator, and I wish he was. Uh, For the record, I wanted to like Glenn. I really did. I gave him multiple opportunities, but he has let me down virtually every time. He's had some good reports and reporting over the years, but how's the saying go about the blind squirrel again? In the end, he's a 9-11 truth denier, and as I've said before, that's sort of my litmus test of who is credible and who's just spreading the old shinola. Anyway, so Glenn, what you're saying here is our foreign policy should be based and dictated not only by how another country and its leader feel about a certain situation or the current geopolitical climate in their region, 
but even more so because that leader has come to us and said that the same shit is going down as it was 2,500 years ago, according to a book where the accounts of the said story was written centuries later with, of course, multiple disputes and opinions over the actual facts of the story? <laughs> Why stop there, Glenn? Why not take our cue from the Bible's very own the Bible's view on slavery or women. Hey, I'd love to own me a couple of each, which, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, are fully endorsed by the Old Testament. Hey, I'm going to leave the rest of my opinions. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to leave the rest of my uh, opinions on this matter for the haranguing around section. But there is another interesting angle Mr. Beck takes here, or another button he pushes. You know, he tells us that Nettie Boy didn't take his uh, didn't take this message to our our president. No, he took it to us, the American people. Now, wrong again, Glennie, me boy. He took it to our so-called representatives, right? If he wanted to take it to the American people, he would have bought some airtime during Walking Dead. He could have even used some of the three billion that we hand him each year in aid. Now. I'm sure we could devote an entire another show to what Obama is actually doing and how it looks like he's not playing nice with Israel and all that. But the bottom line is Netanyahu went to a group that can and will pony up even more dough in American lives if need be. I'm actually not sure which is more incredible. Back thinking that a world leader getting up before Congress was appealing to anyone but those keepers of the purse, or that Americans who can't look and respond to events filled with corruption, lies, deceit, et cetera, et cetera, that have repeatedly transpired over the last 50 years are all of a sudden going to be able to give one flying fuck about some fiction 2,500 years ago. <sighs> <laughs> all right. Now, if that wasn't good enough for you, Story number two here at Scuttlebutt Time. And once again, 646-668-8756. I see that Chang is just lighting up the chat room. Um, Benny should come on the Freak Show. Absolutely. Bring Netanyahu on here, Changus. Absolutely. Story number two uh, comes to us from the Daily Mail over there in UK. And uh, see, it's titled... They look like the new boy band, uh, World's First Three-Way Sex Marriage. Um, all right, shit's getting too friggin' weird for me, man. Seriously. Uh, so, three gay ties, and, and that's Thai men, not a reference to my high school wardrobe, apparently all said, we do, on Valentine's Day this year, and made history being the first triple gay marriage. So first and foremost, the three gay ties, <laughs> if that's not the start of a joke, I don't know what, three gay ties walk into a bar. No, but um, the best part of the story, these guys' names, and I shit you not, are Joke, Bell, and Art. I mean, shit, I've generally avoided Thai cuisine, but now that I know this, I might have to reconsider it. Obviously, it's only a matter of time until this debate rages here in the good old U.S. of gay. I mean, A. All right, look, I'm not sure I've ever made my stance clear here on the front row about gays and gayness. But why don't I do that right now? I just don't get it. No, not being gay. Okay? That I understand. All right? What I don't get... Sorry, I lost my... uh, Lost my place here. No, what I don't get is that gay people make up two to three percent of the population, but roughly seventy five percent of the news headlines. And now we're getting all this transgender, trans, transgender shit. And who are they? Like a, a quarter to a half percent? No, one in hundred million trannies out there, and all of a sudden we need to be making new fucking bathrooms all over the place. What is going on? It was really. Two points here that I want to hit as far as all the gay talk is concerned. They kind of go hand in hand. The first is, personally, I think we can put an end to all gay talk right here and now. 
And by that I mean end all the squabble about the legal side of this ridiculous debate about marriage and everything that comes with that. And it's really quite simple, which is exactly why it'll never work and get considered out there in the freak show. All men, and women of course, all people are created equal, right? Supposedly says so in our Declaration of Independence. So it stands to reason that two people who say they want to spend the rest of their lives with each other are still considered equal to everyone else, just as they were in their soloness. Now, I'm a states' rights guy, states' rights guy, so I like it at that level, but if the feds have to step in, so be it. But there are no more marriages, period. Or in the sense that we know them, or with the meaning that we have attached to this institution. Let me explain. Once you become an adult, or with your parents' permission, say if you're still a minor, anyone and everyone has the right to name anyone or anything as their co-self. That's right, it's the co-self law, uh, law, or the the other half law. I'm still working on the name, but the point is, you and your co-self sign a paper saying you're going to be co-selves until further notice, and your co-self has all the rights and privileges traditionally associated with today's marriage. From so. You want a co-self a goat? Go for it. Slap its hoof down on an ink pad, <laughs> and slap the hoof on the bottom of the form, and that fucker can go on your HMO. And in addition, my second point here, if you also, note also, want to get traditionally married within a church, and according to their bullshit, knock yourself out. Separation of church and state, baby. It's a wonderful thing. We should give it a try. Your doctor's office, your employer, and all the attorneys that ever get involved with anything you do in your life, well, they only care about your co-self. Who, or again, what, have you legally attached yourself to? Getting married in a church under those big watchful eyes of God? That doesn't automatically equal having a co-self and vice versa. More to my second point, if any of you gay folks out there want to also have the church or a church recognize you and marry you within their laws and according to their doctrine, well, that's simply your own fight. But it is at the heart of what amazes me. Look, being gay is totally fine in my book, but pathetic is another story. Here's a group, granted a large one, that by and large thinks that the very nature of your soul is evil. You're evil just the way that their God made you. And because of that, you should spend all of eternity burning in hell and fire. And they have thought this way for hundreds and hundreds of years, along with just dozens of other catawumpus philosophies throughout the ages. And yes, I said catawumpus. And you want to join them? Fuck them. Once again, I will defer to our upcoming segment to espouse more on this whole shit show that we call organized religion. However, well, I now, would be... Now I got to jump in here just for a minute, all right? And I'd like to get to uh, one of the two callers we now have in the queue. Uh, but first, I just wanted to make a couple comments on what you were just saying there, Crafty, if I may. Oh, we do. The... Um, um, First of all, I, I agree with you that if you're, um, you know, if you're looking, if you're gay and you're looking to get married in a church, you know, that's your fight because I, you know, I don't tell, I don't try to tell churches what to do anymore. I'm long past that point in my fucking life. <laughs> but, but the reality, you know, the reality is if you're going to try to somehow balance being Christian and gay or whatever church you go to and gay, um, you know, again, that's that's on you to try to change the mind of the churchgoers and and try to change the mind of the priests, whatever else. But the reality is. You know, Christians and Christians in particular, uh, though in other countries it's other other religions, are trying to act like they own the institution of marriage, and they don't. That's the fucked up thing. All right. The reality is, this is something that the state, the the government, the people at large have an interest in. All right. It is the state that issues marriage licenses. It is the state that gives you tax breaks, you know, allows you to, to file jointly, et cetera, all right? Correct. Stay Correct. the fuck out of it, Christians. As you say, separation of church and state. As far as the state is concerned, they should not give a shit who gets married. And I, I have to disagree with the whole co-personing thing that you were talking about a little bit because mm -hmm. there's no reason whatsoever that any group should have to 
a, you know, take a different name for what their union is, um, be in any way uh, separated from from the the union between a man, you know, act as though a man a union between a man and a woman well, uh, right. is somehow better or even different than a union between a man and a man or a woman and a woman. I think that's absolutely, you know, we got to stop doing that shit. And uh, just a, a well, closing thought on this: is is take the people. I'm saying, though, take the people that are traditionally getting married in a church, and you can still do that, but even those people would still have to do the co-self thing, right? So everyone, right. to get on your HMO and your attorney, like, whatever word we want to use. I don't care. Oh, I, see. Married, okay. I, get what you, I get what you're saying. So, so the church thing is, is one, one word. For the church. Let the church have their own word for it. Let the state have their own word for it. And exactly. everybody can do the state thing, and, the, and those who the church approve of can get the church thing if they want. That, yeah. that I'm okay with. That I'm okay with. And the story, anyway, I just wanted to, to, to put, yeah. Well, <laughs> let me let me just throw one last little thing out here. Uh, you know that uh, I'm very partial to my native heritage, and I wanted to. Uh, I don't think this is an actual native quote. I've tried to track it down. I cannot tra trace it to a person, but I've seen it in a meme. I've passed it out there on Twitter myself, and I really love it. I'm just going to read it real quick. It's just a short paragraph. It says. Christian leaders stand on our soil and claim, quote, gay marriage has never occurred here. Over 130 tribes in every region of North America perform millions of same-sex marriages for hundreds of years. Their statements are both hateful and ignorant. Your, quote, homosexual was our two-spirit people, and we considered them sacred. Right on. Right on. Anyway, let's hear from the callers, man. Let's hear from the callers. Let's take some callers. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, the the chat room's lighting up. We got some callers going on. So uh, before we do, I'm going to go to uh, uh, the caller ending in 0190. And I'm not going to give you a whole well, number out over the air. Don't talk about the numbers. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> Next time, don't give me yeah, a code okay. on the one you just oh, gave. I won't now. Yeah, right, right. I won't now. <laughs> but all right. But you know, anyway. Uh, please turn your speakers all the way down. You'll be able to hear us through your phone. Uh, but if you don't turn your speakers all the way down on your computer, then we're going to get some nasty echo feedback and all that stuff. So uh, please do that. And I'm going to go to you, 0190, right now and see who you are and what you got to say. Hello. Thanks hey, for calling the front row at the Freak Show. You are on the air. What's up, Crafty? What's up, Adam? I good to hear from you guys. Hey, hey. I appreciate you, you not giving out my whole number. That that would have made it an interesting night, I'm sure. <laughs> um, well, I don't think anyone uh, can find you with 0190. Fair enough. Yeah, they could try, but if they get through with that, then, you know, more power to them. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So who are we talking uh, to here? My name is Brian. I, I live in southern Ohio. What's up, and Brian? Thanks for calling in. Okay. I thought you might find it interesting. Oh, yeah, I've been wanting to for a while. So um, I actually am going to be an educator, um, middle childhood. And we went to a kind of a seminar at my university, and they had a guy come in about equality, and he gave us a worksheet, and it was entitled The Gender Bread Person. <laughs> and basically it is it is something to help people identify themselves if they're i guess confused so you know mm. they have this gender bred person and i hey, hey Brian can i can i stop you one second did you say this Absolutely. is at the university level oh yes yes this was a, okay. a large, <laughs> I, I i didn't yeah. i wasn't sure if it was university or elementary so please go on uh, yeah, exactly. You know, this was at a large symposium, and the head of the – I can't remember what they call it, but he, he's the, the head guy of the department that deals with, I, I guess, homosexuals and, you know, those who identify themselves, you know, by a different name. Um, mm -hmm. They have – between the spectrum of woman and man under gender identity, they have a gender queer. And then it goes through androgynous, intersex, bisexual, you know, it, it was really wow. odd. And he told us that actually genderbred person is not the preferred current um, avatar for this, but it's now some oh, kind oh, of a unicorn. 
I'm not really. I, he didn't obviously have that handout ready for everyone, but you know. Uh, yeah, I know, and of course, you know they they want. <laughs> it's all about equality and treat us fairly, but you're going to have a giant unicorn. You know, I mean, I, that's just me. I, oh, I love the unicorn stuff. I really do. And, and coming to a forehead near you, the tattoo, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, and that's the thing. You know, this is all fine. If you want to identify yourself in a different way, I don't have a problem with it. But I think that this ties into the the religion thing you're talking about. And I mean, you could even talk about, you know, people of the Islamic faith coming into America. It's, everybody wants to change everyone else to accommodate mm-hmm. themselves. And I think that that's a big problem. You know, America has always been great because you come here, you you melt into the culture, and, you know, some people say, hey, I kind of like what that that guy's got going on over there, that group is doing over there. You can can adopt some of those practices or ideas or, you know, if you have a theological difference, you know, you could talk about it and maybe come to some sort of understanding. I don't know, but... Mm-hmm. The idea that you can come yep. to America or anywhere for that matter and make other people change the way they are to accommodate you is just it's just erroneous. I mean, it's insane. I think that's an excellent point. Excellent point. You're absolutely right. I mean, we need to stop trying to change each other and start learning how to get along. I totally agree. I mean, uh, yep, so for what it's worth, I mean, I guess that's my two cents. I I hope that. Yeah, Brian, thanks for the call. It was uh, fantastic. I mean, it's, it's you know, uh, uh, number one, um, uh, exactly what, you know, Front Row at the Freak Show is supposed to be about, and that's, you know, I mean, here's something freaky that I didn't know was going on, right? And you're telling me this is happening at the at the college, university level, and it's, uh, uh, you know, just, again, throw it on to, uh, you know, the mountain of, of bizarro world, right, that is uh, – uh, is the world we live in. But, uh, no, Brian, thank you for the call, and we are going to move.